All right, this video is going to be a bony palpation of the tibia and fibula. So we're gonna start off with the tibia. One of the easiest landmarks to find on the tibia is on the anterior part, and that is the tibial tuberosity, uh, which is where your quadriceps are inserting via the tendon or ligament, depending on what you would like to think about it. So I'm gonna ask him to extend his near contractus quadriceps, and you'll be able to see this patellar ligament attaching at the tibial tuberosity site. From there, I'm gonna slightly roll him into medial rotation, and I can go up along what is known as the oblique line. It's kind of a separation, and it helps outline tibialis anterior. So if I ask him to do dorsiflexion and inversion, you often see a muscular separation right along that oblique line right here. So tibialis anterior muscle there, oblique line there. As I continue along that oblique line, it will end on a bony landmark on the lateral condyle of the tibia, known as Gertie's tubercle. Gertie's tubercle is the insertion of the iliotibial band as it comes down the lateral aspect of the leg. So the common action for both tensor fascia lata and gluteus maximus is abduction. So as I ask him to abduct, you can see this indentation line that's going along for the iliotibial band becomes a taut band, that final insertion is here at Gertie's tubercle. So he is doing abduction of the acetabulofemoral joint right now. As you palpate, we're gonna look for the proximal ends of the tibia. So we did this in the previous video, but we're gonna find it again. So I'm gonna prop his leg up and I'm gonna be looking for the joint line between the femur and the tibia. So I'm gonna be holding on to the lower end of his tibia, and as we rotate it out, doing lateral rotation, and as we rotated it, doing medial rotation, I'm looking for this joint line where you see movement occurring. So right here, everything that I'm grabbing would be the lateral condyle of the tibia, with Gertie's tubercle on the forefront of it. And if I went over to the other side and grabbed all the way from back to front, this would be the medial condyle of the tibia. And bring his leg back down. From the tibial tuberosity, he can run down the very obvious anterior border that goes most of the way down and then starts to flatten out just before the ankle complex. If you go and roll off to one side, the very bony medial border of the tibia, which again spans from about here to here, and you can get a little bit of that medial border of the tibia as well. If we roll the leg out, a little bit harder to do, but you can squish into the anterior compartment and just start to feel the beginning of the lateral surface or border of the tibia through there. As we follow the tibia down from the supine view, will be able to hook and go completely around what is known as the medial malleolus. Medial malleolus is a part of the tibia and the lateral malleolus is a part of the fibula. So only the tibia is what we will talk about with this medial malleolus. I'm gonna roll him in a little bit. So while I have a hold of his malleolus, I will move items below that. So you can see that this bone is not moving as I'm moving around his foot, but in behind it is gonna be one of our landmarks we need to discuss. There are two tendons that are curling in behind the medial malleolus through a groove. Now the groove is named for those two tendons, so as I'm gonna ask him to do some inversion against resistance, there's one of the tendons. This is tibialis posterior. Deep to tibialis posterior is flexor digitorum longus. So again, groove for tibialis posterior and flexor digitorum longus. I'm going to have my body turn over into prone. Again, we're going to go up towards the proximal end of the tibia. I'm bending his leg up to get and get a sense of where does the tibia start. Now, a not a palpable landmark, however, for future reference, on the medial posterior condyle, so medial condyle, posterior surface, there's going to be a horizontal groove for semimembranosus. So we're gonna to try to identify that when we palpate semimembranosus in a muscle video later. The next landmark that we're gonna be looking for is known as a soleal line. Now again, I'm not gonna be able to feel this, so I'm gonna be drawing an imaginary line. However, I'm gonna tell you how to approximately draw it. First thing I'm gonna look for is the head of the fibula. If you're unsure about that, watch this video a little bit later and we'll be finding that. 
but on the lateral aspect of the leg here, I can find and identify the head of his fibula. The soleal line of the tibia is running on an oblique angle running from superior lateral, inferior medial along the posterior shaft. You may be able to identify that the muscle tone is a lot softer on the medial part of the proximal calf than it is on the lateral. And that is because muscles like soleus and all of the deep posterior compartment haven't started here. This is mainly just gastrox. So this would be the approximate location of the soleal line. All right, I'm gonna have my individual turn back into supine for us. We've gone through all the landmarks of the tibia and we're gonna be moving on to the fibula. I'm gonna go back to the aforementioned tibial tuberosity where we started today. And I'm gonna landmark that. Now, what's really helpful is the head of the fibula is almost in direct line with this. So as I move lateral, I'm gonna continue. The condyle is above where I am. Gertie's tubercle is right here on that condyle, just for reference, I'm below that. And as I head lateral, I'm gonna be coming across a very obvious bony landmark. This is more posterior than it is anterior, and this is the head of the fibula. Now there's a few ways to confirm that you're on the head of the fibula, so we're gonna go through a couple of them now. One thing that we can do is place our fingers on what we believe to be the head of the fibula and ask the person to do eversion. As the individual does eversion, this muscle right in here, which is known as fibularis or peroneus longus, originates on that head of the fibula. So if our body does that again, you can see my fingers going up and down. A second obvious insertion is for your biceps femoris muscle. I'm gonna ask my person to try to dig their heel into the table, and you can see this very obvious tendon that I'm showing right now. And if I follow that, that actually goes into the most proximal part of the head of the fibula, which is often known as the apex. The head of the fibula being here, and the top of it being the apex. Just below the head where it starts to narrow, we would call the neck of the fibula, even though it's not an obvious bony landmark. The lateral surface or shaft of the fibula is covered by your fibularis longus and then your fibularis brevis muscles. So you're gonna to have to sink through those muscles to try to follow the shaft all the way down. Again, by having the person repeat eversion, you can feel and possibly see those muscles going up and down as you follow it the length of the bone. At the distal end of this bone, where we have the lateral malleolus, which is in between my fingers and thumb here, I'm going to again hold on to that object and move around his foot and you should be able to see that the bony object that I'm feeling right now is not moving where everything distal to my hand is moving. We also have those aforementioned muscles, fibularis or peroneus longus and brevis. Their tendons go behind the fibula through another groove. Just like on the medial aspect, this groove is named for the muscles. So as I'm strumming the tendon of fibularis longus and deep to that brevis, they go through a groove on the posterior fibula, groove for fibularis longus and brevis. If I ask my person to evert again against some resistance, you will easily be able to see on our body those tendons sticking up as they go behind this bony landmark.